I feel like I've spent the last 10 years just preparing for this video alone. I'll be 28 this year and I've learned so much about money and I can't wait to share it with you in this video. This is the best way to handle money in your 20s. There's a lot of way you can handle money, but I'm giving you the best way. So you're gonna like a lot of what I have to say in this video and you're probably not gonna like some of the stuff I say in this video, but that's just how it is sometimes. But what I'm about to give you is the truth and the truth is coming from my perspective in life as I've experienced it. And it's also coming from the results that I've been able to get within my own life, as well as failures that I've had in my own life. So it goes both ways. I didn't like some of this information when I got it, but eventually I ended up getting to a point where I appreciated it. So without further ado, we're gonna jump straight into this video. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Reggie Bryant. I'm the author of The Wealth Journey, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. So I'm gonna start this video off by saying, the best way to handle money in your 20s is by first being able to handle yourself and your own decisions. Let me give you the perfect example. I recently just posted on my story on Instagram this video I saw of Michael B. Jordan. It looked like he was at an interview and he was just giving his mindset and his perspective on life. And I don't think I can quite put it in the words as well as he did. So I'm about to actually play it for you right now. Man, I'm built different, period. I rarely go out. And I always felt like... If other cats was out partying and I was home studying, I would have an edge. Like, I'm literally like, all right, I will party later. I work hard now, so the second half of my life, I can do whatever the fuck I want. Mm -hmm. that and that's it. That's the level of thinking that this whole thing starts with. I want to be able to do whatever I want to do when I get older. It starts with a future mindset. It starts with a mindset that's not thinking too much about right now or dwelling too much on the past is always thinking about moving forward what can i do right now he was coming from it with an aspect of work ethic but it goes like that with money too you can go out later you can prolong the things that you want right now you can delay your gratification a little bit longer if that means you're going to have much more results in the future remember that as we move along with this video because that is going to be a major major key in this entire video that's your foundation. Also, if you want weekly advice directly from me going straight to your email inbox, I do have a newsletter. Check it out in the description. Click it and you will get weekly financial advice from me that can help you better handle your money in your 20s. You will not regret it. I don't know about you, but I grew up with some strict parents. I, <laughs> I feel like I couldn't really do anything. Like I wasn't even the type to go out party and I wasn't even the type to drink or smoke or do none of that. I just wanted to chill with my friends, play basketball sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Go over to their house, play video games. But that stuff was done in severe moderation. And I wanted to have fun so much, but my focus could have been more so on school. I was always a naturally good student, but I think if I would have focused a little bit more my grades would have been that much higher which probably would have gave me a little bit more freedom and it's like that in life too because things come back full circle when you get this thing called freedom like when you're in your 20s you don't really have to answer to your parents anymore especially if you do what i did and move out you don't really got to answer nobody anymore and so as a result now you really have to position yourself to succeed because if you don't it's easy to slide back to the point of no return what is that point of no return i'm talking about i'm about to tell you that point is man i'm i'm grown okay i'm 20 all right i'm 21 22 25 years old cool all right i'm, I'm doing pretty well i'm making some money now got my own place got my own car this is nice I don't got to study because I'm out of school now. I'm just going to work and going home. Ooh, I can fit some things in my schedule. I can go out to the party. I can go out to the club. I can hang out with some friends. I can drink all day. I can sit on the couch all day and watch Netflix. I can go buy all of these things. I can buy that car I've been looking at. That's $700 a month, $800 a month, $1,000 a month. So what? I got it. I'm going to pull up at work tomorrow stunting on everybody because I want to show them that I got it like that. It's real easy to fall into that mindset. That's the point of no return because you don't even realize it is slowly but surely killing your finances. So if you focus on yourself heavily in your early 20s, if you focus on your work ethic, if you focus on being diligent and hardworking, if you focus on making sure your priorities in your life is straight, 
you'll be doing good because all that time that everybody else is spending at the club, some of that time could be better spent learning how to, I don't know, book your own doctor's appointments and dentist appointments. It's ridiculous that we got these grown behind folks who still got to call their mom just to get her to schedule your appointments for you. That is unacceptable. Ain't no way you're 23 years old and you still got your mom doing that. That's that's not acceptable. You have to look at yourself and look at what you're willing to accept and what you're not willing to accept from yourself. You should look at your bank account and be like, man, this is unacceptable. And it's not about beating yourself up. It's about looking at the numbers and being like, if I want to be here, I can't accept being under $1,000 in my savings account. I can't accept that, which means you're going to work to change it relentlessly. The same energy that everyone likes to put into the club and the drinking and stuff. And everybody, they look at that type of work ethic and that type of mindset as, oh, you're a square. Oh, like you're lame. You don't really want to have fun. Like you can say whatever you want to. I guarantee you my results are better than yours. That's how you got to look at it. And that's how you have to frame it when people talk down to you like that. Because people are going to always have something to say. But you just have to keep remembering what outcome it is that you want and what your goal is and how you're going to get there and what your results are going to be. You just have to keep remembering that. Because when you're in your 20s, it's easy to be influenced by other people who look like they're doing well or look like they're having fun. They can be driving in that BMW right now, in that Mercedes right now, going to the club, drinking, doing whatever they want to do. And people say, oh, well, you can have balance in life. Life is all about balance. Okay, what's balance about partying every freaking weekend? There's nothing balanced about that. As a matter of fact, that shows an imbalance because you prioritize fun so much that you have to chronically do it, not realizing what it's actually doing to your finances, not realizing that that $1,000 a month that you're spending on that BMW is not working for you. You haven't even built yourself up to a point where it doesn't matter how much the BMW costs because you just got it like that. You haven't even built yourself up to that place. Right now, you think that's where you're at. But in reality, all you're doing is saying, okay, cool. I make 70 grand a year. So now I'm spending 70 grand in bills, not realizing that when you take the taxes out, you don't make 70,000 a year. You don't even make 65,000 a year. You might make 63 or $64,000 a year after taxes. Then you mess around and you pay $1,700 for rent. Now you're paying $1,100 for your car note for that BMW you just got. Not to mention the fact that you have other bills to pay. Your phone bill, your utilities. You go out to eat all the time. You go out partying all the time. You go out clubbing all the time. You want to travel so you're buying flight tickets all the time. Just because you look at that good salary that you have on your paycheck, you just feel like because the money is present that we can just spend it. Because you can, you just do. That is not a disciplined mind and that is not the mindset that this should be approached with. If we're talking about the best way to handle your money in your 20s, the best way to handle it is one, get your priorities straight. Make sure you're making responsible decisions. I'm not saying never party, never have fun at all. I'm saying don't freaking do it all the time. I'm saying be someone who's like, well, I'm going to prolong that right now. Like, for example, when I was in college at first, like freshman year, I was like, yeah, we're going out, we're going partying. And guess what got hit? My GPA got hit. It almost went down a whole number. How you go from a 3.6 GPA to a 2.7? I'll tell you how, because my focus wasn't there. And then you know what? The rest of my college career, I focus, focus, focus. I said no to the parties. I said no to drinking. I said, no, I'm not doing none of that mess. I'm not going to hang out with the boys tonight, I got stuff to do. Nah, like I'm locked in right now. This is what I have prioritized. Nah, I'm going to be in the library. You ain't going to catch me today. The only the only two places you were going to catch me at in college was at the gym or at the library. If I wasn't there, I was at home. That was it. And people didn't understand it. People thought that I was just no fun. People can think what they want to think. But I guarantee you when I graduated, I was number one. I was number one in my department, 100% I was. Number one in my department, I got a great job offer, I got the highest salary offering coming out of college out of anyone that I knew, and I had the results, I had the GPA. And that was what I set out to do. That was the reason I went to college. So let's not forget the reason you're doing this, the reason you're probably watching this video, you wanna dial your finances in. This is how you start, get your priorities straight. After you get your priorities straight, you wanna aim for the highest salary possible. And this can be done with some simple research. Like I used to get obsessed with like salaries and job titles and, you know, even college classes. Cause I was like, this is going to prepare me to do this type of job. I was literally like that. I was like, well, what kind of salary can I expect to get? Like, I'm not going to college and spending all this money for no reason. I need to know what is going to be the outcome of this. 
And stuff that is moving the world forward right now is what I would focus on. Like if I were to do it all over again, I would focus on the things that are moving the world forward. Like I went to school for industrial engineering. I got a lot of skills under my belt because of it, but you might not be interested in that. I would say anything in the STEM field, which is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Anything in that field, a lot of things in healthcare are also things that are moving the world forward right now. That Those are the types of things that I would focus on. I'm not going to say that you should or should not go to college. I'm just saying you should focus on that field. I don't care if you decide to get a trade, get a degree. Focus on something that's going to get you there. And even if you're already on your own and working and stuff and you're not happy with the amount you're making, on the side, you can definitely spend some time on your weekends or on your time off of work just learning other skills until you build that skill set. It's like anything else. It's going to take some time to do, but you can do it on the side. That time's going to go by anyway. That's a much better use of time than chilling on the couch watching Netflix all day. It's a better time than going out all the time. It's a better use of time. It may not be as fun. It may not be as glamorous. It may not be as memorable, but who gives a crap? Once you get to where you want to get to, it's not, none of that's going to matter because now you've bought yourself that freedom that I'm talking about. That's mature thinking. And it's something that I wish I would have known sooner, honestly, because I used to be like, man, why are my parents so strict all the time? Why can't I do anything ever? But now I appreciate that because it got me to a mindset of, okay, now I see, now I see why they did that because I really wasn't disciplined to have that freedom. And once you build yourself a buffer, like for example, once I built that GPA, I felt a little more comfortable if I did go out to a party because I was like, okay. But even then, like it was so out of my system that I was like, man, this ain't even it for me. I need to get back to work because I fell so in love with the grind and so in love with the results that I was like, I, I, there's a different meaning for me on this earth. And that's where that video came from that I was just showing you from Michael B. Jordan. That's my guy, by the way. I appreciate his acting. I've always enjoyed that guy's acting, but I especially enjoy the Creed movies. I've been through every single one. They're amazing movies. I've, al I've always loved those boxing movies, fighting movies, stuff like that. He did a great job in the Creed movies. But anyway, that's besides the point. That's where that video came from. He's talking about his work ethic and he's talking about, hey, I'm built different. Sorry, not sorry type of thing. Like, yeah, I'm built different. I'm, I'm going to put in the work. I'm going to put in the time. I'm going to put in the effort to where my purpose in life is. I'm going to outwork you. I'm going to outsmart you. I'm going to outdo you in every way possible, purely because I'm consistent with my work. I'm not getting deterred by certain things like partying, like holidays, like things like that. I know there's going to be a time and place to be with your family and stuff, but seriously, I'm, I am... 36 hours away from my entire family so I can only visit them for certain holidays so some holidays are going to hit and I'm going to be like okay well that's great that's a holiday cool cool but I'm, I'm still getting to the work and some people aren't going to understand that but you don't get certain things done without having that mindset I mean think about it some people use the fact that they have a full-time job as an excuse not to go for their dreams. I have a full-time job too, and I have a ton of responsibility, and I still manage to make time to write a book, run a YouTube channel, and run a website and a coaching business. You have to want it. And I know I'm yelling at the camera for this whole video, but I don't know why. I'm just fired up tonight, and I just wanted to get started about something. So this is me getting started. This is me allowing myself to get started tonight. I want results. See... The reason I told you the first thing is because if you have the discipline and then you pair that with getting the highest income you can possibly get at the young age that you are, you're already not going to put yourself in a bad financial situation where you're spending all of your salary every single year to the point where you're going negative in your money because you make 70 grand, but it's really 63 or 64. And then after that's gone, guess what? You're still spending because your bills are now locked in. You're never going to be paying under what you're paying now for your rent. In fact, it's going to go up for your car. It's locked in. You're going to be paying that $1,100 or whatever amount for that car note. I'm not saying never have car notes, but in a $1,000 car note, what you out here doing? Who are you trying to impress? I put that kind of money into the stock market. That money's growing. That's another story for another day. But you pair being responsible and disciplined and not overspending and living below your means. By the way, check this video out up here, how to live below your means, because it's much more than just holding back. 
it's much more than just saving money. It's much more than just saying, oh, well, I don't want to spend anything. I'm a cheapskate. No, it's giving you a mindset for life. That's how you really lock in on the discipline aspect of this video. But then if you pair that with earning the highest income possible, saving money is going to then become so much easier for you. People struggle to save money because their bills are too high and their financial obligations are too high. So if you put yourself in a position where you're not going to splurge on crazy things, literally out of pocket for you, like literally you cannot afford it like you can, but it's going to spend every single dollar that you have. So you'll be living paycheck to paycheck. That's not a comfortable situation to be in. So then you put yourself in a position where you're not spending too much on rent because you watched my video on how to make sure you're not spending too much on rent the five things that any young adult can do to be financially stable. That video is fire. Check that one out. And you're not putting yourself in a bind. So you're living below your means. On top of that, you're making a lot of money. So now you have a little bit of buffer for your money. And then as your pay increases, you're going to find more and more buffer. What that buffer is going to end up becoming is wealth because now you have more money. Oh man, I don't know what to do with this. So I'm going to throw some of this into my saving and some into investments. Now you're looking good. And this is where the third aspect comes in. Now, now we're talking about managing your money properly, following the 50, 30, 20 rule, making sure you have a good savings and an emergency fund and making sure that you have investments. You manage your money properly. And then when you want to upgrade, you can feel more comfortable because you're like, hey, this ain't going to hurt me at all. This is how much I make after taxes and this is how much I'm going to spend. And I'm not going to and I'm going to make sure it doesn't go over this percentage of my pay. And once you do that and once you think like that, that's the best way to handle your money in your 20s. 1000%. I want you to work on yourself to be the best version of yourself, to be the best professional, the best friend, the best significant other, the best whatever it is that you are obligated to be in life. And that's going to make you more valuable. You're going to make more money because of it. And you will have a much better, happier life because of it. And then if you want to go out and have fun, you can, but it's way more justifiable to do that then. If you want to do, if you want to do the best thing, if you want to handle your money in the best way, you have to do a lot of other things in the best way too. Like when I when I go to work, I'm doing everything the best way I know how and I'm always asking for feedback, always looking for improvement because I don't want to just be good. I want to be the best. Having that mindset is going to lead to raises and bonuses that you never even saw coming. That's going to build even more buffer for you. That's going to help you build your wealth even more just by having the mindset of how do I get better? I'm not satisfied with doing good. I'm not satisfied with doing great. I want to be the best. And even then I'm not satisfied. How can I get better? Same thing for this YouTube channel. How can I make this better? How can I make this more entertaining? How can I attract the audience that I want in front of me? How can I make the quality of my videos better? The sound of my videos better? That's where this camera, the blurry background, the lights in the background, as well as the microphone came from. How do I make this better? When I go to the gym, how do I make myself better? How do I get stronger? How do I get faster? How do I get more endurance? Linking all of these together is the best way to handle your money. Not even just if you're in your 20s. If you're in your 40s, this is the best way to handle your money because you have spent the time when you were young to build that discipline, build that strength, build that endurance and build that work ethic to a point where you're extremely valuable, you're extremely disciplined, you live a good life and you are able to show restraint. See, true strength lies in restraint. So if you're able to say, yeah, I might make $100,000 a year, but I don't spend $100,000 a year, you're showing restraint, you're showing that you're powerful with your money and you show that you're deserving of that money. When you build three to six months worth of paychecks in your emergency fund, you're showing yourself that you were able to be disciplined enough to put that kind of money into your savings account, that you were disciplined enough to automate that money to go into your savings account. You're showing that you weren't urging to buy something so bad that you reached into your emergency fund and spent half of it just on a watch or on a Gucci shirt. Or in a Gucci bag. It's nothing wrong with getting those things, but make sure your money's right first. When you have more money invested than most people make in a year, you're showing yourself that you've had that discipline all along to keep investing, keep consistent, trusting the process, not giving in to the hype, not giving in to the fear when the stock market inevitably goes down, and not to cash out just because it goes up. The long game is what this is all about. That's the best way. Be disciplined. Live below your means, make good money, save, invest, and live your life. Do that and you will have 
very, very, very good results. I know I got fired up in this video, but I really appreciate you for watching. I appreciate everybody who watches all my videos and comments on the videos, even the negative ones. But this channel is an educational platform. And this is what I do. I educate. So you might have liked some of that. You might have disliked some of it. But it's the truth. I've gotten quite a bit of results by doing what I just said. I didn't tell you anything that I haven't done myself. But that is how you do it. Investment videos will be coming for those of you who are still asking and interested about investing. They are coming. I promise you. Anyway, that is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant. And this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. So you can control you. Control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.